Okay, first of all, you got a tube that has a cross section area of 0.07 square centimeters. How much water does it take to fill a tube of length 80 centimeters? Okay? Well, the answer to that is pretty straightforward. Cross sectional area times altitude. The length of the tube that's being filled is altitude because that's perpendicular to the cross sectional area, right? It doesn't matter if it's going up and down, right and left, or at an angle, it's still an altitude because it's perpendicular to the cross section, right? Perpendicular to the circular cross section, which yeah, we, we assume it's a circular cross section. So, how much water? Well, Volume is cross-sectional area times altitude, so the volume, and this is centimeters squared, not cubed. Now it's just a smudge, but it's centimeters squared. This comes out 5.6 cubic centimeters. Okay? So if we were, if, if water was moving at a speed that fills an 80 centimeter tube of this cross-sectional area in, yeah, well, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll work the speed in here. It would take 5.6 cubic centimeters of water to fill that tube, which means that if we're filling the tube from water that descends out of the original bottle, the cylinder, uh, we're gonna have to lose 5.6 cubic centimeters of water from the cylinder, right? Okay. Now the next question, how fast is water moving in the tube if it takes two seconds to fill an initially unfilled 80 centimeter length, right? So it's like, you can do a picture of this, here's your tube, and water's just started flowing, so water's here, so water's filled up to here, right? And then two seconds later, Water's full up to here. And this <coughs> distance here is eighty centimeters. Okay? Well that means that the front chunk of water has to move eighty centimeters in two seconds, so it's moving at forty centimeters per second, right? So how much volume per second does this take? Somebody said, Corbin, tell me. Singling me out, man, really? Huh? Really singling me out? You've already answered the question. Naturally, I'm singling you out. So far on this question, you're the champion. We've got to let everybody else, okay? Fortunately, you don't have a big head about it. Okay. And you don't. Okay. So, somebody tell me. 2.8. 2.8 cubic centimeters per second, right? So, there are two ways to answer this. We can use the fact that you did 5.6 cubic centimeters in two seconds, and you divide that by two, you get 2.8 centimeters cubed in a second, right? Or you could do the other calculation, well, it'd be 40 centimeters per second. That's great at which your altitude, you know, the length of water in the tube is changing, by multiplied by uh, 0.07 
centimeters squared and you get 2.8 cubic centimeters per second. Okay? So now we've got an example where we've got a cross-sectional area, the rate at which volume is lost and flow speed, we got that right here. How are these things related if you want to symbolize them? So let's say the cross-sectional area of the tube is ACS, that's a CS, there's probably too small for you. Flow speed is V, okay? And the rate at which volume is lost I'm going to write that as dv dt, which is like change in volume divided by change in time. That's the rate of change, right? It's like a delta v over delta t, okay? So I could say delta v. Or if you have a changing rate, it would be dv dt at a given time, okay? So to get the rate at which volume is lost, you're going to get, you're going to have your volume over your um, cross-sectional area. Okay, so you're saying that your delta B over delta T is, volume. now you said volume over cross-sectional area? Yes. But the big V is, well, also, we got a little V and a big V, right? This little v is your flow speed. And this v looks just like this v, so I've got to do something about that. Okay? So I'm going to make the volume a bigger, fancier v. Okay? So this is volume. This is flow speed, right? So go ahead and restate what you just said. So at the rate at which volume is lost, you have your volume over a specific amount of time? That's what it is, because that's what the rate is. But remember, the rate at which volume is lost is just something we can use d delta V over delta T, or dV over d T, just for a symbol that represents this, right? Instead of saying rate. Okay? So, well, let's identify what we have in this equation, then we'll see how they're related, right? What's this? What symbol did we use for the 40 centimeters per second? The rate. Is that the rate at which volume is lost? Is that the cross-sectional area of the tube, or is that the flow speed? That's the rate at which volume is lost. Mm, no, because speed. that's in centimeters per second, and centimeters per second don't measure rate of volume loss. What rate, what, what, what quantity up here measures the volume 2 .8 loss? Cube, uh, 2.8 cubic centimeters. Okay, so what's this? DV over DT. This is your, I'll just use a delta because that's all we're really using right now. DV DT is just a limit of delta V over delta T as your time interval shrinks down. It's the limit the ratio approaches. Okay? But since we're assuming a constant speed implicitly, <coughs> it's the same thing because the rate isn't changing. Okay, so that's delta V over delta T. Okay? So, what symbol stands for this and what symbol stands for this? First one would be V and the second one would be A, C, S. Okay, why is this V? Because that is your flow speed. Yeah, it's how fast the flow, yeah, it's how fast water has to be flowing to fill up 80 centimeter section in two seconds, right? So that's V, little v. And the only thing got left is cross-sectional area, but that's exactly what this is, right? So you understand how this sequence of questions leads you to this defining relationship that can be used, if you know any two of these, you can find the third one, right? If I know this one and this one, then I can get this one. All I have to do is divide this by this, right? So all the relationships are easy. These are fundamental relationships. They're really simple. But they can be hard to uh, 
hard to invoke when you need them, okay? They can be confusing. So, anyhow, you can have some homework on this idea because it's really important for the flow model and for other things that we can observe in other models.